Freedom Life Church, Pastor Randy here. So excited to have each and every one of you join us here today. I'm going to go over a few things about our FLC online campus and website. First and foremost, we have a chat that we would love each and every one of you to jump in. Share a couple of things, where you're watching from and how many people you're watching with. Our hosts love to hear that and read that and be able to get some dialogue going on with you. A couple other things, if you're used to giving financially in person, physically at the campus, you can do that online as well. Up top, there is a give tab. You simply click that. You can give one time or you can give reoccurring. You could join life groups. We have online life groups where we meet through Facebook. Uh, we meet virtually through Zoom. That's ongoing. That's always happening throughout the week. Uh, also, we have something exciting. We have a Kids Connect. Click the Kids Connect tab. There's some resources there. And we're so excited to be able to have the family join us online as well. So get familiar with it. Like I said, jump in the chat, ask one of our hosts any questions that you may have. We will love to be able to love on you and just enjoy the service with you. All right, so let's just dive on into our service right now and see what God's gonna have in store today. Hey, FLC family, welcome back to the weekend experience. It's Pastor Lynn from San Antonio campus here. So excited to be with you. Thank you again for just um, wearing all your PPE, your mask, um, helping us to social distance and protect one another in love each week. We are so excited for service and for another week of Freedom Forward. Before we get started, I have just a few announcements for you. Um, first, we have baptisms coming up for our Hampton campus. That is gonna be on September 13th at 6.30 and it's going to be at Fort Monroe. And then on September 20th, we have Freedom 101. That is simply finding out who we are, what we do, why we do it, how we do it. It's going to be right after service, September 20th. So make sure you sign up for both of those things online. And then um, during Freedom 4, we have been really um, blessed to partner with Convoy of Hope. We are looking to raise $35,000 throughout this whole sermon series to be able to bless them um, and to bless what's going on with Spain, with the sex trafficking, the rescuing of the women there. And we get a chance to be able to do that. So if you are interested in that, ask any of the pastors, you can head over to flconline.org um, to give. Make sure you put Convoy of Hope and um, designate that as well. And then make sure you stay connected. flconline.org, the connect card, um, you're signed up for text messaging, all of those things. We want you to stay connected for this season. All right, we're getting ready to start our service. We're going to start with our FLC family time with Pastor Hannah. Are you guys ready? Let's go. Amen and amen. How are we doing today, family? Okay, let's try that again, because I have a special helper with me today, and she wants to make sure that she hears you. How are we doing today, family? Awesome job. So we are excited, and this is Peyton with me. She gets to spend a little bit of extra time with me. So I have a question. What is this? If you guys can see it online. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gift, right? It's a gift. You know something that's covered and it's like wrapped really awesome and it has this beautiful bow on it. It's like a gift. You get gifts for birthdays, like special occasions. My birthday was this week, so I got some awesome gifts. Yeah. So we give each other gifts on holidays and all kinds of special occasions. So when you were born, all of you guys, every person that's in here, every person that's watching online, when you were born, God gave each of you guys a specific gift. Sometimes we refer to them as talents, right? So he gave you guys a gift. Sometimes it's like sports, right? I think when I opened this, I think there was a soccer ball. Some of you guys might be good at soccer. Peyton, you're good at soccer, huh? Some of us may be good at like music. I'm not good at music. I'm not good at singing. Um, some of you guys may be good at serving. We're going to hear from two awesome people um, during the message. They're incredible at serving outside of the church. And some of you guys might be good at cooking, baking. Yeah? 
Yeah, some of you guys are good at that. So can I introduce you guys to two of my very special family members today? And they're going to share with us their gifts and talents that they get to use to serve the Lord. Can I guys, can you guys give it up for Miss Kristen? And Mr. Josh, all the way in the back. So Kristen, I'm going to start with you first. So you have a gift of singing, right? Yes, sure. so she has a gift of singing. <laughs> yeah. And how long have you been singing? Uh, my whole life. Okay, her whole life. So we could say that God gave her that talent. And she's pretty good. Yeah? Okay. Okay. And what about you? This is, this is Josh, and we often see him playing the bass. So that, like, oh. So you're gifted in two areas. So tell us about your gift, Josh. Yeah, so God's really blessed me to um, be able to play numerous amount of instruments, um, primarily bass guitar and keyboards. Um, but it goes to saxophone, um, other instruments in the band, drums somewhat, you know, it, but whatever can make it sound, I can kind of oh, make sound. That's incredible. So God has gifted him musically, right? So I have asked them if they would share something with you guys, because we know that that family isn't just us who have kids, right? We're all a part of a big family. And these two members of our family, they're going to share their talent and gift with you guys right now. Does that sound awesome? Okay. All right. Can you, can you share that with us? Sorry, Josh is so good, y'all. I just wanted him to like. <laughs> what a friend we have. and talent that they have. Thank you guys so much for, for joining in with this family time. So I want to tell you guys, maybe you may not be gifted to sing vocally or to play musically, but you have a unique gift. Whatever that is, I want to encourage you guys to use that to serve the kingdom of God today. Start today. If you don't know what it is, ask the Lord because he has specifically designed you to be unique and he has given you amazing gifts and talents that the kingdom of God needs. So the Bible says in Colossians 3, 23 through 24, and it's going to be up here on the screen if you want to see it. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. Say that with me, all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. Can I ask us all to stand, please? You know, this verse, it says, to use your gift to serve the Lord. It doesn't matter what people think of you. It doesn't matter even if you don't think that you're good enough as long as what you're doing serves the Lord. So don't be ashamed of your gift or try to hide it. And it's going to be different from someone else. But that's the beauty of the family of Christ, that we all get to be different, but we all get to work together because we are uniquely different, but we uniquely fit together. So use your talents today. You know, you may be watching online too, and you may, f in, in this room, there's just a sweet presence. There's a sweet presence of the Lord today. And he, I, I feel like he's wanting to remind you that you matter. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter if you're a baby who's, who's six weeks old or six days old. It doesn't matter if you're older. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter where you came from. But the Lord is saying to you today in this room and watching online 
that your gifts and your talents matter. And to be able to explore that and use your gifts and talents to serve the Lord. Can we pray before we get, begin? But before we begin, I just want to remind you that if you're watching online, we are going to be able to celebrate communion today. So go ahead and get your elements because we're going to do that right as, as worship ends. And I just want to tell you guys in the house too. There's a sweet, sweet presence even in the voice of a child. There's a sweet, sweet presence in the person that may be here alone. Father, we just thank you so much for your presence. We thank you so much for reminding us that you have gifted us with unique things. Father, allow us opportunities, show us opportunities to be your hands and feet, to use those gifts and talents to the fullest potential, Father. If we are a child in here, Father, allow us to do what you've created us to do with full potential, with full enthusiasm. So, Father, we host you today. We welcome you, and we just expect you to do what only you can do. And we ask all of this to things to be done in Jesus' sweet name. Everyone said amen. If you guys believe that our God can do the impossible, can you raise up a sound of praise in the room? Father, we know that you can do anything but fail. You've got all power in your hands. We celebrate your presence today. We raise a sound of faith in the room today. God, we declare that we know that you can do anything. Yeah! Come on, let's go! Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Hey. You're the God of Say it's true, but you never fail. Your 
you really believe that our God can do anything tonight? If you believe that, can you just put your hands together right here? Hey! Tonight we're getting ready to declare that our God can do anything. Sometimes faith and culture around us tells us that things are too difficult. Sometimes the enemy will try to discourage you and let you know that that thing you believe in God for is unattainable. But tonight we declare that he's still working miracles. Does anybody believe that? Can we say that together? Say, he's still working miracles. Come on, I want to hear you raise that tonight. Say, he's still working.
He promised to be our provider. If you need peace, he promised to be our peace. But the enemy 
The enemy tries to come in and separate us from God. He tries to disconnect us from the promises, but because of the blood of Jesus, there is nothing the enemy can do to stop those promises from coming to pass. I wanna, I wanna read uh, 2 Corinthians 1 10, 1 20. It says, for all of God's promises find their yes and fulfillment in Jesus. And as his yes and our amen ascend to the glory of God, we bring him glory. One of the ways we give our amen and receive those promises is by taking communion tonight. And so if you're watching online, you can, you can grab anything, you know. It really doesn't matter if you've got Cheez-Its and Kool-Aid, that works. If you got some Hawaiian rolls and a Capri Sun, that works too. These elements by themselves, they, you know, they don't represent, they don't mean much by themselves, but what they represent has changed our lives forever. It's because of what these elements represent, we can be in communion and back in fellowship with God. Jesus gave his life as a ransom to bring us back into fellowship with the Father. And so tonight, we take these elements, if we can get them open. We need the saints to be praying tonight. Thank you, wife. Thank God for help me. Amen. But this wafer here, it just represents his body, which was broken for us. If you would, just break that. And let's take eat of this together. This juice represents the blood of Jesus. The same blood that washed us. The same blood that redeemed us. The same blood that still has power today to redeem, to rescue, to revive, to restore whatever you need. Everything you need is in this blood. Let's take this together. Father, we thank you for your blood and for your body that was given just for us. When sin came in and tried to cause a divide between us and you, Father. You sent your son to give his life so that we could receive his sacrifice and be in fellowship forever with you. And we get a seat at your table and a position in your kingdom as sons and your daughters. And we thank you for this now. We do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you're grateful for the sacrifice of Jesus, can you just raise a praise in the room? Come on, somebody clap your hands. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are thankful for the blood and the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may take your seat here this evening. We're going to uh, get ready to jump in to the word of the Lord. If you're excited to be at church, somebody say amen. Come on now. Saturday night, no better place to be. And I know that uh, with everything going on, it's, it's been a little different. Uh, at church, but I will say this, it is incredible to see uh, some new faces that maybe I haven't seen in a few weeks, and for just to see a somewhat, you know, more of a, a packed crowd, I know online is, is, uh, is, is a, in attendance, and so tonight is just awesome, so give yourselves a hand just for making it out, being here, you look good, all that good stuff. My name is Kyle, I'm one of the pastors here, uh, and I get a chance to preach uh, tonight for week three, and uh, I won't be here uh, long speaking myself, we're actually going to have a few guests join us. And, and during this series, uh, Freedom Forward, we've been highlighting some of the incredible work of our outreach partners and our church partnering with them, uh, doing just some great things. Because during coronavirus and COVID-19 and social distancing and all the craziness going on, the church is still on the move. Amen, somebody. So we're still doing things. So we want to highlight uh, what that looks like. But not only that, I want us tonight to be able to kind of hear some of their story and what it really looks like to uh, understand someone who's serving and someone who's uh, doing what they do. And we'll jump into that here in a second. Uh, but I want to start us off by looking at a passage of Scripture uh, that often I think we love to hear in one sense, but in the other we may just be uh, a little taken back by it. So if you have your Bible, so you can look at the screen, it's going to be in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. And so it says here, this is Jesus speaking. If you have your Bible and it's in red letters, that's Jesus, kind of a dead giveaway. So there we go. Uh, verse 31. 
says, but when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick. Excuse me, lost my place. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Verse 40. And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you, cursed ones, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his demons. We don't like to read that part. We're going to keep on going. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Started on a high note, but kind of got a little serious, right? Now, I want to kind of give us a little bit of relief, but not take away from the seriousness of the text. I think there's something that I want us to focus on here tonight that I think is really powerful. One is Jesus uses these words righteous and unrighteous. And I think it's really important for us to understand the context in which he was trying to, to speak to, what he was really trying to get at. You and I naturally will look at this and see the works that were being done by the righteous. But I want us first, before we look at what they were doing, I want us to understand what it truly means to be righteous. And so, again, these people in this text that Jesus was referring to, they weren't doing something to get something. They were doing something because of who they were. They were the righteousness of Christ. You and I, if we have said yes to Jesus and are in relationship with Jesus because of Jesus, because of his sacrifice, what we took communion over, we are now considered the righteousness of Christ. And so the first place we want to start with anything when it comes to doing anything for the kingdom or for the Lord is start at the heart. Understanding who we are, understanding what, what uh, uh, it really means to be righteous. I think about the text uh, where the Bible says that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteous. And so you and I, because of Christ, we are the righteousness of Christ. So if we can just start there, we can almost kind of look at the second half of that text and not be too afraid. Because we can begin to see, you know, I'm the righteousness of Christ. So what does that mean for me? How can I move forward in this? And so we get to verse 35, and we start seeing all the things that the righteous were doing. Now, if you read that text and you were like, I don't do that, I don't do that, kind of avoid that, I'm here. It's okay. You can kind of relax a little bit and just, Woosa, okay, like just don't get too uptight. Because what we're seeing here is the righteous, those who are righteous, we got to understand something, is that they were not doing these good works to earn their salvation. Jesus is saying something really important here, that they were blessed and they were brought into the kingdom. And what we're seeing them do is the evidence that, in fact, they belong to the kingdom. They were showcasing the evidence of the kingdom of God on the inside of them. So here, let me put it to you this way. We don't serve to earn a spot in heaven. We serve to show the evidence of heaven. That's why we serve. In whatever capacity that looks like for you. You can serve every single week. You can serve once a month. You can serve in a different way than I do. But we serve to show the evidence of heaven. Their lives are evidence, and our lives are the evidence that God has been at work in us. And what's powerful, if you understand the context, let's pick on one thing. In first century Palestine, the, the lack of modern hotels and facilities was, you know, like that we have today is just prominent. And so when Jesus says something like, when I was a stranger, you brought me into your home. The reason why that's so important is because if there was a visitor that would show up in the town, if they didn't know anybody there and they were a stranger, they would probably sleep at the town, the center of the town, outside. And so what the Christians did is that they kind of took it upon themselves to say, you know what, we're going to make hospitality kind of our, our responsibility. We're going we're gonna to be different. We're going to see people a little 
different. So the sheep and the righteous lived in a way that, that, that they were responding to what Jesus meant to them. They wanted to show people the difference that was on the inside of them. Whatever that looked like, whenever an opportunity rose up, they were looking to just show the evidence of the kingdom of heaven. And so it seemed to me that when I read this text and I understand the righteousness, it seemed to me that the hand of the righteous was connected to the heart of God. That's what it's really all about. The hand of the righteous was connected to the heart of God. And so their hands were an extension of their heart. The righteous saw people in need differently. And Jesus was pointing out that the righteous, you and I, treat those people who are looked upon negatively in a different way than the rest of the world. It wasn't just that the righteous said, you know what, I have a calling or I'm going to treat this serving opportunity as a project to participate in. No, it was a collective effort where the righteousness of Christ, the Christians, the believers established, watch this, a culture of serving people differently. They established a culture collectively together, and they were loving people. And, they, and not only did they establish it, but they participated in it. And people started to see the kingdom of God show up. So with that being said, I want us to be able to uh, hear some stories from some incredible partners who are doing just what we talked about here and who have opportunities for us to maybe even join in with them and maybe even inspire us to do what the righteous do on a daily basis. So if you guys would make some noise, a round of applause, give God praise for uh, Angela York from Thrive and Keisha St. Clair from Azer Initiative. If you would give, give them a round of applause as they come up. Come on, y'all keep clapping. Make them feel loved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on up. We'll, we'll grab a seat. And we're going to do this uh, interview style. You guys want to say hello or anything really quick? I know it's a little different being up here with all the lights and stuff. So, Hey, everyone. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> you want to say anything, Keish? Hey, guys. What's up? All right. So we're going to jump into a few questions that we kind of prepared. And they, they know these questions a little ahead of time. But we'll see where the Lord takes it. And we'll kind of just throw it around, uh, what have you. But I want them just to quickly introduce themselves uh, and just kind of talk a little bit about what the organization that you're a part of really does and that and that we partner with what that's all about so we'll start with you Angela if you don't mind yeah. I'm Angela York and I'm the executive director of Thrive Peninsula so I've been there for five years and we really appreciate you guys and your support Freedom Life has been such an awesome partner to us and I'm hoping to recruit a few of you to come with me and join the ministry so um, Thrive is a coalition of we're about 80 churches that come together and we pool resources to help people who are struggling financially um, there's about 40% of Americans are um, only one paycheck away from not being able to pay rent, um, struggling with food. So this isn't us versus them. There are a lot of people in our country who are very close to just tipping over financially. And so we're here to help them. And so we provide emergency rent and utility assistance so we can help them with their critical bills. We do financial coaching with every gift. So we're sitting with people, we're advocating for them, we're building budgets and we're connecting them to really helpful tools because we wanna prepare them and send them out um, so that they can live a healthy financial life. And then we also have a robust food pantry. So we have fresh, frozen and shelf stable food on site. And we do all these services um, showing people or I call them dignity restoring practices because we respect people, we love people, and we treat them like they are valued children of God, even if they don't feel that way, because that is what we do as Christians, and that is how we serve. What do you not do? I'm just, I'm just kidding. It's like, man, that's awesome. That's amazing. I know the story is going to be similar to Keisha. What do you do? So, so Keisha, you want to go ahead and share, uh, you know, who you are and what you do as well, what organization yeah. Um, I'm the executive director of the Azer Initiative, and uh, we do emergency services. So if people get into a crisis after hours or on weekends, um, we step in, help with short-term food assistance, short-term lodging, and connect them with additional resources and wraparound services that could meet their needs in a long-term capacity. One of the ways we do that is by partnering with Thrive and some other people you guys will hear about um, throughout this sermon series. 
Um, we also have various housing programs for people in different places in their life trying to get back on their feet or with limited income or just needing a second chance. Um, we also participate in various outreach events throughout the year, um, which you guys actually get to get involved with um, in different capacities. So, for example, we do um, some back-to-school stuff, some Azers Angel sponsorships, Thanksgiving meals, things like that. And um, for the most part, we are just really intent on loving people because God first loved us and doing things just a little bit different um, because we feel like we've been called to bridge the gap between needed resources and people in need. And there are some amazing agencies and organizations out there, but there are people that fall through the cracks. And so we just feel called to come alongside them, do life with them, make sure that they feel seen, heard, and loved, and that there's someone walking with them, holding their arms up when they feel like the rest of the world has forgotten about them. Wow, awesome. Yeah, give her a hand, that's amazing. Okay, so I think often when we hear, you know, what our partners are doing and it's like, wow, like this is amazing. We hear about Convoy Hope, or I know last week we were uh, with CareNet, they were here. And, and so the, the thing that I'm always kind of curious about, and we talked about this a little bit, is I kind of wanted to know why. And I think a lot of us may want to know, like, why do you do what you do? Like, what, was there a moment that it kind of clicked for you? Because I think often in church, I don't know, this is just me. I'm just going to be, you know, churchy and just real. But you have some people who kind of just sit in the pew and other people who are just like going out and doing things, you know, just moving. And then you're trying to find where you fit. And so, you know, but, but why do you do what you do? Was there a moment? Was there like it just kind of clicked for you? Did you just have this thing that kind of started? Or, or what was that like for you? Let's start with you, Angela. So I actually did have a really defined moment. Um, so when I was in high school and in college, I went to a church and that was very focused on evangelism. And I was very focused, like just 100%, didn't see anything else. And I went to college. I was very involved with my Christian fellowship. And um, my staff leader told me that she felt God saying that I needed to go on this missions trip with her. And I was like, no, not me. You have the wrong person. And she just kept coming at me, and I didn't want to go until God spoke to me so clearly, so clearly, because I did not want to go. Um, so I went on this trip. It was seven weeks in Egypt, and we were working with Sudanese refugees, and these people were escaping violence in their home country. Um, and we were there to teach them English, which, you know, it, we're, we're, I, I didn't really teach anyone English, you know. But um, <laughs> anyway... God brought me there not to help people. God brought me there to work on me. He changed my whole life. I saw these people. I saw their struggle. Um, that was so different than mine and so much harder than anything I'd ever experienced. And he showed me how much he cares about people who struggle. And after that trip, I decided that I wanted to spend my time um, serving people and working in nonprofit. Did you be started all these different congregations coming together? I just love that picture of being the hands and feet of Jesus together. Um, and I actually really love the financial piece to it. Um, I really love the idea that we can help people walk towards financial freedom because that's just something I'm real passionate about, and that's what I love about what we do. Awesome. Okay. Keisha, I know a little bit about your story. I know we've had conversations over and over again how some things start, but just share, you know that God moment and share what it's like for, and Asa, I know some of it, so I'm trying not to say things, but just share, because I know it's powerful, uh, just what God has done in you and how you've begun this whole initiative. Yeah, so um, I, I was really at a, a similar point in my life where um, I knew about the Lord, but I was not in relationship with him. Um, and I was making a lot of poor choices um, that led to opportunities for me to do a ton of research to prepare for Azer. And that looks like homelessness and drug use and incarceration. Um, and ultimately what happened is that um, the Lord has a tendency to use things if we let him. Um, our, our past can become a platform for us to give him glory. Um, to, to stand on uh, what restoration looks like and to just be a demonstration of hope for other people that nobody's ever too far gone. And so as I continued to lean into who I was and whose I was, I was able to kind of shift my posture from shame and guilt and anger and resentment and fear to one of open hands. 
and, and something changed in that moment um, that came by way of amazing leadership um, helping to grow me, that came by way of people speaking life to me, um, even when it was hard, and, and asking me intentionally, challenging me um, to make a decision if I was going to let God do what he had called me to do instead of looking at someone else to do what I thought they should do. And so there was a day when I just literally, all of the things that I had experienced in my life, all of the things that I was seeing in the world, in this community, on missions trips, in different capacities, um, got to a point where it broke me because the relationship that I had with the Lord at that point, he had begun to break my heart for the things that was breaking his. And so I just shifted my posture and I said, God, what does that look like? And he gave me the vis vision for Azer. And Azer is actually the word um, that the Lord used when he created Eve to be a helpmate for Adam in the Old Testament. And as we move forward into the New Testament, that same word Azer is used to describe what the Holy Spirit is for us today. And that's someone that intercedes for us, that goes to war for us, that holds our arms up and gives us discernment and, and a power um, like nothing we've ever known before. And so the Azer Initiative was born, and we just continue to um, be willing to chase after the least, the last, and the lost, and to let them know that if he can do it for a wretch like me, he can do it for anyone. Come on. Okay, so we've kind of gotten into the story thing. I want to I wanna have you guys kind of impart something into us. So you clearly have a story. You clearly have a heart to do what you're doing. And, and it's, you know, easy. We'll get to the part where we're going to invite people, you know, to participate. But if you had to put into words, you know, a way that can encourage us to, to see people, to treat people, to, to serve people differently, you know, to be the hands and feet of Christ. Like, what, what's that message like for you guys? And, and I know it comes from your heart. It comes from your story, your experiences. But how, how would you just say, you know, hey, this is, this is why not only you do it, but why we need to do it. And what that, I mean, we read the scriptures and what that looks like. You guys are doing this stuff. So what is that, what's that word of advice or wisdom that you guys could give us? And we can start with you, Angela. Yeah. So I love the verses that you brought. Um, I brought one also. So I'm going to read this. This is one of my favorite verses. Um, so this is Proverbs 25. It says, if your enemy, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. I love that because we're supposed to treat our enemies that way. And the way I was before I went on my missions trip was I would question people who needed assistance. I'm not sure if anyone else has ever questioned anybody oh, to on. say, oh, what's that person's motive? Or did you see the car that they're driving? Do they really need the help? That's not what we're called to do. These are our enemies that we're supposed to be feeding and giving something to drink. And so that verse really speaks to me about how we're supposed to treat everybody. It's not our role to judge people, and it's not our role to make a call about who they are. We don't know them, unless you walk with them, and that's different, but most of the time when we're serving people through ministry, we're only meeting them for a few minutes, and we really can't, we can't know their story. And so we're called, our role, what we're called to do is to serve them and to love them. That's our role, not to judge them. And um, I know sometimes that's a challenge for me. I mean, it's, that's just being real, but that's what we're called to do. And the second part of this verse, which I really love the illustration of it, but in doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head, the person's head. So we have this juxtaposition between evil, right? So evil, we have hunger, we have thirst, we have want. Um, we have judgment, right? And God is calling us to be the good that just smothers the evil, right? With our hearts, with our love, with our, with our provisions. It's our job to just smother it. And that's our role, just to provide for people and love them, not to judge. And so um, I just love this verse. I think it speaks to us on so many levels. It speaks to me anyway about um, what ministry really is. Good. I got a second question to follow up with that, but I'll go to you, Keisha. What words of advice, what words of wisdom, like what, why, 
Why should we? Why, what does that look like? Because we're coming from your heart, your story, you know, same, same thing. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think for me, uh, one of the biggest things that I've had to learn is that we are not responsible for the results. Um, sometimes it's really, really scary to think about stepping out and especially getting involved in someone else's life if they're struggling, if they have a need, or, or I have some areas of brokenness, how could I possibly uh, help them? Um, and, and sometimes it's as simple as a smile or, or a hug, you know, like pre-COVID <laughs> social you know, practice social distancing. Um, but, you know, honestly, I think that one of the biggest things I had to get over is that um, it's not about what we're doing, it's about who we have been called to be, right? And that's an opportunity to be the light in the dark places in people's lives. I remember going on a missions trip to New York and a guy had, um, every time people had come to do outreach, they were sometimes the best way to get a, a word with someone is by meeting a tangible need, right? It, it kind of gives you the opportunity to speak to what's going on with their life. Um, if the Lord has called you to do it, let's just, let's just start over. Skrr. You have to lean in and ask God what he's called you to do. Um, that is the very first place to start. What, what is it that he's stirring up in you? What is he asking you for your yes for? Um, but Jumping forward, um, I remember this man telling us that he had given his life to Christ like 53 times to get a hot dog. And I was like, wait a minute, Preston, I remember his name. And no one had ever asked him his name before they had offered him that hot dog and asked him if he knew the Lord and, and had him, you know, the Romans road to salvation. And I remember sitting on that street with him in December and it was cold outside and asking him his story. And he shared all of these things with me and, and he shared with me how he worked, but he just couldn't get to this place of, of stability. And so he would go into McDonald's bathrooms, but he'd have to have enough money to get a cup of coffee because up there, you can't just go in a restaurant and use the bathroom like you can down here. We're privileged. I just need y'all to know. Um, so, um, and, and I remember the Lord giving me an analogy to share with him. And, um, and it was just the opportunity. We don't pretend to think that we are going to solve homelessness. Scripture tells us that there will always be the poor among us. There will always be needs, right? And, and those are opportunities for each one of us to operate in our gifts and our calling. Um, but what I did get to share with him is that every time he walks into that McDonald's bathroom, when he opens the door, it's dark. But as the door opens, the light comes in. And, and even though the, the love of Christ and giving his life to the Lord might not look like a brand new house or a brand new car or complete restoration in his family right now, what it looks like is an opportunity to begin to see life a little differently. And if we can begin to plant those seeds, opportunities for people to see where God shows up instead of where he doesn't, it's an amazing way for us to teach them what the love of Christ looks like. And so we just try to do that um, intentionally. And so I would say, um, yeah, man, just lean in, ask God, give him your yes, an unwavering one, right? And when it's scary, remember, you're not responsible for the results he is. Your only job is to do what he's asked you to do with righteousness and integrity and not worry about what anyone else thinks because he's got all of that covered. Amen. All right, so let me, let me play angel's advocate. I ain't going to play the devil's advocate. I don't mess with Satan like that. So uh, how, let's just be real, just real quick. People got bills. People got schedules. We got our own issues. We got a lot of stuff going on. Finances are crazy. We in the middle of a, you know, whatever right now. What, just real quick, what do you say to that? Like when we all are kind of going through some of those things, like we got some of these things, so it's, it's tough to compartmentalize that when I'm so overwhelmed with that and then to make me think, I know I'm supposed to, but I just don't. We kind of count ourselves out in the moment because of maybe our lack, our situation. What, what would you say to, to some of that stuff? I'd love to hear from you guys because y'all are, are doing this. You know, what does that look like? 
So I would say if you're not jumping with passion right now to serve people who are um, poor, as the Bible says, I would say go into the Bible, open up if you have an electronic Bible, and just search the word poor and read all the verses because I feel like our society has such, has such a negative view of the poor, but God has such a positive view of the poor. So many things he says are so positive. I would say read that, let it inspire you, and then just ask God for the opportunity. I mean, it might not be at Thrive or the Easer Initiative, but God will show you where he wants you to go. Just leave it up to him. That's good. Keisha, anything? Yeah. Um, you know, something we hear all the time here, and, and I just really, really believe um, that you can't outgive God um, with your money, with your time, um, any of those things. Um, I remember uh, moments where I thought, man, I'm just feeling nudged to, to do this thing, but I don't have the capacity on paper. And, and what I need you to know is that when the Holy Spirit steps in, it doesn't add up. Uh, one of our board members is always like, are we in the black yet? I'm like, we're never going to be in the black, bro. We're, if we're not in the red, we're not doing our job, you know? <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So real quick, we'll wrap it up here. What are some ways, you guys have the heart, you guys are doing this. What are some ways that we can partner, get involved? What are some things you're doing that's like, hey, we need help with this? Because I think... I know for me, hearing your heart, it's like, man, that's, it's inspiring. It's awesome to know that people in our church are already doing it, but I know more people want to get involved. They just don't know what to do. So what does that look like? So if you work 40 hours a week and you don't have time to serve during the day, you can just like both of us on Facebook and share our stuff, right? That's a big deal. Um, you can participate in, in things, get on our mailing list. That's helpful. But if you have a few hours, um, we're in Denby. I'd love to host you for a couple hours a week. You could answer the phone. You could pack pantry bags for people. You could call clients. I actually really need a couple people right now who will talk to clients over the phone who are in financial distress and take their application over the phone. You have to be super compassionate, but you can actually do it from home. Um, I can just set up the app on your cell phone, and we train you. Um, we also are looking for financial coaches. That happens in-house, but um, the training is online also. So I'd love to have you, and we'll um, provide everything you need to do the ministry. Awesome. Keisha, what about you guys? Yeah, so right now, um, one of the biggest components of opportunity to serve in our ministry is in emergency services. Um, when COVID-19 hit, I don't know how many of you know, but all of the shelters and the day centers and all of the provision for um, the housing insecure uh, shut down. And so we have had a tremendous opportunity to partner with the city of Hampton and the city of Newport News and to bring in men, women, and children into emergency shelter um, in several different hotels between Hampton and Newport News and just do life with them. Since March 18th, we have been doing life with these people. Um, and so we pre-screen them for COVID every single day. Um, we practice uh, social distancing. Um, we wear PPE. Um, we have opportunities to do things like pick up bags from Thrive every Friday because they pack bags for us to help feed the homeless um, or the housing insecure or the working poor over the weekend um, and hold them over a few days in case uh, one of the meals we bring uh, they need a little bit more. So each day we, um, we bring food to them so there's opportunities to drop off food um, there's opportunities to pick up donations there's opportunities to um, come together and purchase uh, meals. Currently, we went from 67 men, women, and children down to 34. So God is moving. People are, are moving into housing. People are making steps forward Whoa. in the middle of a pandemic, you guys. So I just want you to know that, um, you know, none of the promises and provision of Christ stop. Um, even when the rest of the world does. And so that, that's possible because of the yes of people like you that say, hey, I do work during the day, but at night or on the weekends, I'm willing to answer the phone because if someone gets into an emergency, someone has to answer that call and say, what can we do to help you get through the next 48 hours? So that's a way that you can get involved. We have administrative things as well. Um, there are tons of opportunities, um, and it all starts with leaning in and saying, hey, Lord, uh, what might this look like for me? 
And so I'm sure if you contact Angela or um, myself, I think they're going to shoot our information up there shortly. Or yeah. you can uh, go online to the Freedom Life Church website and reach out to um, the outreach pastor, Brianna. And she will get you connected with us. And we would love to just find out what your heart looks like and get you plugged in however you feel led. Amen. So we actually have an email. If we throw that up really quick, this is one simple place. If you want to go, if you're like, I want more information, I want to get connected with either Azer or Thrive, and you're like, how do I, just this email, impact at freedomlifechurch.com. We will get you over to them just to make it simple. You can look them up on Facebook, all that stuff. But if you're curious, maybe you want to see how it works or all that stuff, just email here. And then we'll get that over to them uh, right away. All right, can we pray for them real quick, y'all, uh, as we get ready to kind of wrap things up real fast? We stretch your hands towards them doing an incredible work. Father, we thank you just for these incredible women of God. And thank you just for their leadership. Thank you for their service, Lord. Thank you that they are great representations of just your hands and feet. And I pray, Father, that you bless their ministries, bless their volunteers, God, with resources, God, with hearts to continue to make an impact in our city. Help them to lead the charge, Lord, to be uh, well-rested, God, and well taken care of personally by your presence, Lord. We even pray over their physical health, Lord, that you just do incredible things, um, uh, just 30, 60, 100-fold. Pour back into them, God, and let more people just come around them, support them, Father, uh, as they move forward to be uh, your your, your hands and feet. And so we thank you for them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we give them a hand real quick, y'all? All right, so we're going to wrap things up here uh, really quick. I want to just say this as the band has come up. Something I want us just to kind of think about, maybe answer these questions. And I kind of thought through this. I said, you know, some of the, the church questions that we maybe never ask, but it's kind of in our, in our uh, brains or maybe we have with those closest to us, is like, okay, so what am I really supposed to do? Am I supposed to just give my money out to everybody or invite random strangers into my home? Or what does that actually look like? Like, what am I? Well, we have some opportunities here, and they said it over and over again, but I think there's something to be said about everything we heard. I think it's less about how much you do, and it's more about why you want to or don't want to. It's more about the heart. And Pastor Brian and I were talking this week. He said something really powerful that I wanted to repeat. If there's an issue with the hand, there might be a problem with the heart. And I, I want to say that to challenge us, to say, you know, the last question, what they kept saying is, Lord, what are you calling me to do? And I think we should just ask that question during this season. God, what does that look like? It could be a moment. It could be an assignment. But what does that look like to, uh, to go take the next step, to be the hands and feet, to help those who really need it. Um, and so the bottom line to all of this is we want to see people differently, we want to treat people differently, and we want to serve people differently. That's what the righteous do. Amen? Would you stand with me real quick? We're going to end with a time of prayer, and I just want to encourage us as uh, our time of worship, rather, but as we worship, can I just invite you to take these next few minutes just to ask that question, Lord, you've clearly brought us here online in this room there's a reason there's somebody there's something that you're calling me to do can we just ask that question as we worship so father we thank you right now for your presence god we thank you for the example of these powerful women of god we thank you that we are partnering with some incredible organizations and there's opportunities for us to continue to do that for more to get plugged in but even so god there may be some things in this room some some desires some organizations some opportunities that you've been stirring inside of people that they've yet to do so god i pray tonight you just give permission that you give permission for people to go out just to begin just to start just to do it just to love people to see them to treat them and to serve them differently father as we worship let your presence give us the answers we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Narrow as the road may seem, I'll follow where your spirit leads. Broken as my life may be, I will give you 
less of me less of me and more of you i just want to see you As I was praying, I just, I just felt the Lord kind of impress on my heart the, the words ability and availability. And, and I really feel when, when God presents us with something, we, we start with our ability and we can easily disqualify ourselves. What could I possibly do? How could I solve? How could I? And, and God does not need our ability. He needs our availability. And if you will say yes, you notice when Peter and John were going to the church 
and they saw the crippled man, they didn't say, let us show you how awesome we are. And they actually didn't even say, look, we're going to solve all your problems. What they said was silver and gold I do not have. I don't have the ability, but I am available. So they looked at him and said, look at us, Preston. I see you. But what I do have is this. In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. In the name, it's our availability that demonstrates his ability. And so I just want to challenge and encourage you to just, whatever is already trying to rise up to discourage you from being a part of what God is inviting you into, if you give him a yes, he will take care of the rest. It's surrender. It's surrender. It's surrender. That's all it is. God uses ordinary people like you and I, like the person next to you and the person next to you and the person in the chat with you. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things so that nobody else can get the credit but him. Because it is all for his glory. It is all for his name. All of it. We're, without him, we are just not that special. But with him, with him, there's a light that can shine in any darkness and darkness can't overcome it. So with your availability and his ability, I believe we will continue to make differences. So I want to really thank our two partners that were here this weekend. They are incredible organizations led by incredible people. And I want you to know something. You might say, man, I, I'd really like to, I didn't even know about that. I'd love to help financially. Can I tell you that if you've ever given a dollar to Freedom Life Church, you have supported those two organizations you heard about? That Those testimonies of the people that got responded to after the emergency shelter shutdown, you were a part of meeting those needs before you even realized it. A percentage of every dollar that comes into those church every single week, 52 weeks a year, 365 days a, a year, is going to support the ministries you just heard about. So if you have sown into this house, you are a part of those testimonies every day every day and if you would like to put your time into these ministries if you'd like to go above and beyond that then impact at freedomlifechurch.com we will get you connected i want to invite you you know as we as we wrap up we have a couple things that are going on and um i believe we have some uh baptism coming up i'm gonna ask for that slide there you go because i'm getting older now that i'm a grandpa i got i need stuff to help me remember hey uh Last, last month, we just got together at the beach at Fort Monroe, and it was beautiful. We saw, I, th- I don't remember, 13, 15 people get baptized. 15, two of them that night said, w- w- I, want, I, want to give my, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to do this. I want to be baptized as well, right there at the beach. And so uh, if you have never been baptized and you'd like to demonstrate your public profession of, of your faith with God, baptism is like a wedding ring. This ring doesn't make me married, but it tells the world I'm married. Right? My vows and my commitments to my awesome wife every day are my marriage. But this ring lets the rest of the world know what's going on in here. That's what baptism is. And if you've never taken the time to be baptized, it's not too late. You can sign up tonight. Uh, Freedom 101 is a time where we just share about the mission and the vision and the core values of our church and why we exist and who we are. If you've never attended, we'd love to have you. We'd love to invite you to be a part of that with us. And you can find out about that on the app and online as well. And this last one here, guys, you know, I stood in front of you guys a couple weeks ago and I just shared with you that in addition to our monthly contributions of local ministries, we always want to stretch in our giving as a church. So we're going above and beyond that. And we are trying to raise $35,000 to help support women and children who have been displaced in Spain because of COVID-19 and its effect on the sex trafficking industry and how how actually what has been looked at as a horrible thing around the globe, there are glimpses within that where God is actually using the very things that the enemy intends for evil to actually liberate and, and help people find some freedom they didn't have before. But with that comes the need for resources, for housing, for food, for shelter, for discipleship, for career training and so $35,000 will get seven families in a house for an entire year uh, to have the opportunity to be trained vocationally women who are making a decision to never have to return to sex trafficking for the rest of their life I want you to know what we do locally makes a difference what we do nationally makes a difference and what we do globally we do it because we want to make a difference for Jesus so if you've been praying about that 
I want you to know that we have that uh, special offering running. Uh, it's, it's on our website as one of the giving areas. 100% of the money that you contribute to Convoy Hope is going to go towards helping these families in Spain and funding this ministry that's happening. And that's above and beyond our, our, our regular uh, tithe that we give 15% as a church to all these other organizations. I just want to challenge you to join us in the stretch. And whatever that looks like for you, just remember, all God needs is your yes. He'll take care of the rest. Just watch, watch how he does it. Watch how he does it. You can't outgive him, and he will blow you away with his goodness. I want to wrap up. I'm going to pray for us. Before I do, I just want to read for you a passage that my wife and I and, and our family, we've just given our life to, and we've seen it. It's in Proverbs 11, 24, and 25 in the message. It says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. I would love to encourage you, whether it was Azer or Thrive or what's going on with Convoy, God's promises are yes and amen. And as you trust him in your life and your time, be generous with your time, be generous with your finances, God has a way of just trusting us with even more than we I don't I don't get it I don't understand it but he does it and I know I can't outgive him and I've given my life and anything else I got is his so I just want to pray for us and invite you just to consider how that might look in your own life is that cool all right Lord we thank you for today we thank you for tonight we thank you for the word we thank you for Azer Father God we thank you for Thrive we thank you Father God that you are actually using these ministries right here in our area to make a real difference in the hearts and the lives of human beings. People who are close to your heart that you know by name. And so Lord, we pray you bless the efforts of their ministries. I pray that you would stir our hearts, those of us in this room, those of us online who are who are being nudged even now, Lord, to step in and volunteer, to do, do something more than we've been doing, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you for blessing all that you're doing with Convoy of Hope and how you're going to provide, Lord God, for what you've called us to. Lord, we just bless it. And as we go from this place, may we leave with a passion in our heart for the people that you care about, Lord God. May we share your heart, Father God, for every person and see them the way you see them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. I will see you next weekend. Hi, FLC family. Thank you for joining us this weekend. I'm excited to be part of this beautiful church to support this kind of ministries. It's because we understood the, the law of sowing. The law of sowing is very simple. It's just to understand by the word of God, what kind of seed, where I have to sow my seed, when and how, how I have to, to plant my seed. God is good all the time. We have to share our blessings. When we share our blessings, we are blessed. This is amazing. This is just the principle of sowing. FLC family, I want to encourage you to follow us, Facebook and Instagram. If you are willing to receive information about our campuses, just text, send us a text message, FLC uh, News and FLC SA. 297-000. It's easy. Just I want to remind you, FLC Hampton. This is for you, FLC, ha FLC Hampton Campus. Hey, the baptisms, Freedom 101 is coming up. Just stay connected all the time. And I have announcement for FLC San Antonio Campus. We have every single Sunday our services in person. I'm excited to see you here in our building. Just stay connected. God bless all your week. God bless your family. God bless your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hey, Freedom Life Church family, I'm excited to share something with you today. Over the past few years, God has done some incredible things here at Freedom Life Church. And one of the reasons is your giving. 
You have given of your time. You have given in prayer and you have contributed financially. Well, we wanted to enhance that and make it even easier for you. So we've established a text to give feature. And it's as simple as that. On your phone, you text this number, 1-855-440-4064, and the amount you desire to give and send. It's as easy as that. Now, there are a few locations that you can give to. If you simply give an amount to that number, it'll go to our general fund. But if you want to give of your tithe, you would type tithe and the amount you desire to give and send. We also have an expansion fund that if you want to give to that, just type expand and the number that you desire to give and send. We're really excited to see how this new feature can continue to enhance our partnership and to see what God does in furthering this ministry in the kingdom. So on behalf of Freedom Life Church, we thank you, we love you, and we're excited to see what God's going to do. God bless.